Hey guys, it's Lee here from Click Studios, and in today's video I'd like to talk a little bit about the two different permission models that we have and hopefully this will help you determine which sort of model is suitable for your type of system. On my screen at the moment you'll notice that I've already created a set of folders and password lists inside them. What you don't know yet is that I'm actually combining the two different permission models in this one navigation tree. I'll explain to you now how to identify this. If you come across a standard yellow folder like this, this indicates that the permissions on the folder are automatic and will inherit the permissions from any nested password list beneath it. This is the default permission model where you only apply permissions on each password list. These permissions will automatically apply to every folder above it, so when a user logs in they'll be able to navigate their way down through the folder structure until they reach their password list. They won't see any other lists in this folder path, only the ones they've been given access to. An alternative permission model we have, which is called the Propagating Permission Model, is where you apply permissions on a folder, and those permissions will automatically apply to every object beneath it, regardless of whether it's a folder or a password list. A folder that is configured to propagate permissions down can be identified by having a green arrow on it, as you can see on this Password Reset Testing folder. The advantage this propagating permission model has is it's quick and easy to apply permissions down an entire tree structure. You only have to make a change once and that change will filter down to every nested object. Whereas with the default permission model, more effort is required to maintain these permissions, but you do have more control. To demonstrate how the default automatic permissions work, I'll first grant access to my test user to the credit card's password list. You can do this from the list administrator actions menu, on the actual password list itself. Now if you can take note of the folder structure where credit cards is located and also be aware that there is a second password list in this finance folder called online systems. If we now log in as this test user he'll be able to access the credit cards list but the online systems one is not visible because he wasn't explicitly granted access to it. What has happened though is permissions have automatically been set on the complete folder path down to where the credit card's password list is located. This ensures that all users that have access to the credit card's password list will all see the exact same folder path. Also, if you are using this permission model, dragging and dropping a password list into a new folder will automatically give access to that new folder path. So now that I've moved credit cards into the IT department folder, you'll notice if I log in as the test user, he will now be able to see the new folder path down to the IT department folder, whereas previously he couldn't see this. OK, now let's take a look at how the propagating permissions model works. What we'll do is convert an existing folder to propagate down, and this can be achieved when editing a folder. First we set the manage permissions manually to yes and click save, and then we click the convert permissions model button. We are then presented with a three step wizard where you are warned that this will possibly change existing permissions on the nested objects. You are then asked to review and potentially change permissions to your liking. And finally, convert the permission model from automatic to propagating. When the page refreshes, you'll notice that the folder icons have changed, so they now have the little green arrow on them. And if we then log in as the test user, he will have access to all folders and password lists located underneath the London folder. Just to prove this, you can check the permissions on any password list under the London folder, and you will see that the test user has modify rights to it. This will be exactly the same for any folder or password list underneath the London folder. One thing you may have noticed is that the London folder was nested beneath a Click Studios folder. The reason this test user can't see it is because we converted the permission model from the second level in the tree structure 
and the Click Studios folder still has automatic permissions being applied to it. Combine this with the fact that that test user does not have any access to any password list under the Click Studios folder, apart from that one folder that we set to propagate down. Now one way to make sure the folder path still looks the same for all users when presented with this sort of scenario is to set what we call manual permissions on the folder. This will override any automatic permissions being applied, but only for that one folder and nothing else beneath it. To set manual permissions, edit the folder, set the manual option and click save. Now if we refresh the page, you'll see that the top level Click Studios folder now has a little blue padlock icon on it. This is indicating that permissions on this folder are now set to manual. So what we can do now is go into the permissions screen on the folder and I'll grant my test user view access. I'll then log out of password state and back in as this test user and you'll notice that he can now see the full path from Click Studios down. And there we can see now that the Click Studios top level folder is set to manual permissions and everything beneath that is set to propagate. Last thing I wanted to show you is what happens if you drag password lists into a folder that is set to propagate permissions. Previously my test user was not able to see this New York folder at all or any of the lists inside of it. If I drag this credit card password list from New York into the finance folder, it will remove any existing permissions and apply the exact permissions that are set on the finance folder. If my test user were to log in now, he would see all three password lists under the finance folder including the one that we dragged from New York. So there we have it, the permissions model explained. If you do need any more help with this, please don't hesitate to email us on support at clickstudios.com.au. Thanks for watching.